Hello everyone and welcome to the Atom Sharp channel. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can use Future Builder in Flutter applications. So let's say that you have a web service and you can see that my web service has a function called get posts, which simply goes to the JSON placeholder URL and it returns you a particular future, basically a list of post. Where post is defined right over here, you can see the post consists of a title and body and that's it. So how can we display this inf information onto a list control? Well, you can take advantage of the future builder widget, which is going to allow you to process the future and using the builder function, you can build whatever you want to build. So instead of displaying this text control over here or text widget, we can actually substitute it, replace it by something called a future builder. So I'm going to go ahead and say future builder. Now future builder does have a couple of different arguments that you must provide. The future. In this case, the future for our case is web service dot get posts. As you can see that in the web service dot dart file, our web service get post function returns a future which contains a list of all the posts. The next thing that you need to do for the future builder is to implement the builder function. Now the builder function is going to allow you to get a couple of different things. One of them is actually the build context. So let's go ahead and get that. And also the async snapshot which I'm just going to say this is called snapshot. Great. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to find out that if our particular builder is actually done or future has been evaluated or not. This you can evaluate using snapshot dot connection state. If the connection state is actually equals to done, this means the future has completed and it has evaluated successfully. If however it's not done, maybe it is still working, maybe it's loading a little bit other stuff also, then we can go ahead and display a circular progress indicator. And we're also going to make sure that we are going to align it using the align child. So in the center of the screen. Perfect. I don't know if you noticed, but when I save it, you can see a hint over here in the middle of the screen, you can see a hint of circular progress indicator running right there. See that? Right there. Okay, so that part is working fine. The other part that we want to work on is when the future has evaluated. So this part, which is connection state done and the snapshot.connection state is completed, we can go ahead and return our list view or any other control that you want to display. In our case, we simply want to display the list view. This view we have to provide the item count. The item count we can get from a snapshot dot data. Now that this data will contain the actual stuff that you want, which is the after evaluation of the future. In other words, this data will be this one. So let's go ahead and say data dot length. Perfect. And we will implement the item builder. We are going to ignore the first argument and we're going to get the next argument. And now we can return anything that we want to return, which will become the tile or the cell for that particular list view control. I'm simply going to go ahead and return a list tile and going to set the title to be text, which will be snapshot.data of index.title. And let's go ahead and save it. Now you can see whenever I save it, using the future builder, we have evaluated the future which has been returned from our web service. We found out that that particular future was actually completed. If it was completed, then we return a list view control. If it was not evaluated and it was still fetching, then we simply return a circular progress bar. If I go ahead and do a hard reset, you should be able to see little bit of a thing going on and then it loads correctly. 
Now, one thing to note about the future builder is that since it is inside the build function, any time the build function is rendered, the future builder is evaluated. This means that any time you will set the state or you will explicitly uh, somehow call the build function, which is usually you call it when you change the state, when you say set state and you set some variable, then the build function is going to get triggered, which means that the future builder is going to make another request and the whole process starts again. So make sure that you do understand the other side of the future builder. It looks pretty cool, but it will be evaluated once you are calling the build function. So that is the future builder in Flutter applications. This Flutter lecture that I just recorded and you just saw the Flutter video, it will be part of my upcoming Flutter for Intermediate and Advanced Developer course, which will be available on Udemy. So if you want to get updates about Flutter or other courses that I'm working on, then the best way would be to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So go ahead and click on the subscribe button so you'll get the updates and other stuff related to the courses and videos that I'm working on. If you do want to check out my other courses which are available on Udemy, simply go ahead and check out the YouTube description with the links to all the courses. I actually urge you to use the links that I posted on the uh, description of the YouTube video. That will you will get the best deal and I get to keep a little bit more revenue because if you use my coupons, then I get to keep a little bit more, to be honest. So you can see a lot of courses I have. I have a new course, which is Combined Framework. I have courses on the Swift UI, the best-selling course on Rx Swift and so on. So if you do want to try out any of these courses, then check out the YouTube description, click on the link and get the amazing discount. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments.